If you have a really long blog post where users have to scroll down really, really far, you may want to add a back to top button. Now we can accomplish that really easily using two different tools. We can either use Thrive Architect or Thrive Theme Builder. I'm going to show you how to do it in Thrive Theme Builder so that you can apply it to every one of your blog posts. And then you can just take the exact same principle and apply it in Thrive Architect if that's where you'd rather use it. So to edit our blog post template, we're going into Thrive Theme Builder and we're going to go to the template section. And then we're going to find the default post template and click edit. Now, our goal that we're going to have is to have a floating back to top button that will follow us along the side of the screen on desktop and on mobile, it'll stay down at the bottom and be as unobtrusive as possible to provide a great experience. So first let's do the desktop version. And to do that, what I like to do is get a content box and I open up the element tray, search for content, drag the content box in. Um, right here above the post content is totally fine. And for now it displaces the content, but I'll show you how to fix that. And then let's grab an icon and I'm going to show you the functional way to do this. You can make this look like whatever you want. Uh, you can choose whatever icon, arrows, colors, positioning, etc. So once we have an icon that we like, we can adjust that color to where it might be a little less obvious on the screen. And then what I like to do is I'm going to move my arrow off to the right here. So I'm going to uh, right align this. Um, it might not uh, be necessary to right align it, but we're going to go ahead and remove all of the margin and the padding. And then we're going to click into the content box that we added. And I want to remove just all of the margin and padding there as well. And now with our content box still selected, go ahead and right align that so that the content box collapses around the icon. And now we have this, although technically off to the right, uh, maybe we want to move it a little more off to the right, completely out of the content container. That way, if we had maybe a full width image, it wouldn't overlay it. So to do that, we're going to make sure we still have the content box selected and under layout and position, we're going to advanced, we'll drop down the advanced section and we're going to choose absolute. Now with absolute selected, we're going to click this option here to move it to the top right. And that's totally fine right now in the top right hand corner. Um, it kind of just gives it in the general direction where we want it to go. And like I mentioned, we want it to go a little bit further outside the boundaries. So I'm going to go here to the right section and I'm going to click and drag until I find a place where I like it. And for this, I'm going to go all the way to the edge. I think that looks good. Uh, and then you can, there you go, negative 150 looks good on my screen. So I'm going to leave it there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to the content box. So we're still in it with the content box selected. I'm going to find scroll behavior and I'm going to click on scroll behavior and I'm going to choose sticky. And I'm going to choose sticky to the bottom of the screen and everything else by default should be totally fine. So next I'm going to save my work. Let's go ahead and preview that. Now you can see as I scroll down, my arrow on the right hand side is sticky to the bottom, but maybe it's a little too close to the bottom. It is kind of touching the bottom of my screen. So I'll come back in here and show you how to adjust that. You can go distance from the bottom of the screen. We can actually adjust that to maybe 25 pixels, save our work. And let's go ahead and preview that again. That looks much better. So imagine if you had little small text below that that said back to top or even just a back to top text link, that could work really nicely as well. Now we need to add the actual link to this element. So what we're going to do is with our content box selected, we're going to go to main options, add a link to this content box. We're going to toggle that on. We're going to click the jump link, toggle smooth animation, click select target. And now we're just going to find something at the top. I like to click on the content image at the top and then click on it. And then now on this orangish button, click add jump link and you're done. So let's save your work. Let's jump back here and refresh. And now if we scroll down the page and we're like, you know what, let's jump back up to the top. You click on it and it smooth scrolls you up. So that's exactly how I would add a back to top link icon or button on every blog post on my website. Now that's for desktop. Let's take a look at how to do that on a mobile device. So because we only want this to be on a desktop and maybe tablet as well, with our content box selected, go ahead and go to responsive and uncheck mobile. Now this will only be visible on a desktop and it won't block the middle of the screen on a mobile device. Now let's go ahead and add in our mobile version and we're still going to build that in the desktop version and then we'll check it in the mobile section after. So let's go ahead and add an element. And this is how I like to build this, but feel free to do this however you like. I'm just going to show you the principles behind it. I like to get a background section 
And then my background section, I like to drag above the post content again. And I like to make it the full width of the screen, and I'll show you why in a second. And I want to add a background color to this just to stylize it a little bit. We'll find some kind of blue. That looks nice. Going to main options, and I'm going to make it not have a minimum height. We really want this to be unobtrusive out of the way. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to get some text and drag in some text in here. And on a mobile device, this is how I like to do it. I'd like to see back to top. And then I like to get uh, an emoji because people on mobile devices love emojis, right? That's how it works. I like to use the index pointing up finger, copy that, jump back in here, paste that in, and then click on the background section and go to typography. And let's set our typography to something that we can read. Awesome. Now with our typography selected, let's center that. That looks good. And then we have some line spacing here that's default to our themes typography. Let's remove those 20 pixels so that things look nice and clean. And one trick that you're going to need to do is with your text selected, go to layout and position in the advanced section, drop that down and choose relative and then click save work. And now if we go to mobile, you'll see that, well, it doesn't look so good right now. And that's because we need to remember to do our scroll behavior. So with our background section selected, and you can always select what you're targeting in the uh, breadcrumbs at the top. So like if I had my text selected, I could click on background section and now I'm editing the background section. And then we want to go to scroll behavior, sticky, bottom, and click save work. Now, if we go back to mobile, I want to show you that uh, we need to turn off our computer and tablet or our desktop and tablet options and click save work again. Now, we're, when we're looking at this in a preview in Thrive Theme Builder in the mobile layout, you're not going to see the scroll behavior. It's just not going to work right here inside of our editor. So we need to actually preview this um, on our page. Okay, so now here we are on a uh, fake iPhone X in the Chrome uh, little, I don't know what they call this, the mobile previewer and the inspection tool. And you can see now that our back to top option is at the bottom of our screen. And as we scroll, it stays nice and out of the way down at the very bottom. And someone on a mobile device can, if this were my finger, I'd be swiping like this to read more. And at any time I could then click here to go back to the top, but we forgot to add the back to top. So let's jump back in and let's go to desktop mode. Now with our typography, what we're going to do is we're going to select all of our typography and we're going to add a link and we're going to add a jump link and we're going to make sure smooth animation is checked click select target, choose the top of our page again, and click add jump link, and that's it. Now, you will see that depending on your theme, your text may have changed. In our case, it has changed to inherit our theme settings. We're going to edit this. We're going to reselect all of our text, and we're going to choose specific, and we're going to make our text white so that it now can be visible again. And now our text is much easier to read, and let's preview that on a mobile device just to make sure. Still looks good. Let's save our work and preview that. Okay, so here we are back on our mobile test. Let's scroll down the page, use our finger to swipe down and then decide, you know what? I wanna go back to the top. Just tap that with our finger and there we are, back at the top of the blog post. And that's how you add a back to top button or bar or option using Thrive Theme Builder. Works exactly the same in Thrive Architect. It just won't be applicable to every post or page on your site. So hopefully that gives you some ideas and some of the know-how on how to implement that yourself so that you can make it match your template and match your website. If you have any questions about how to do this or other things related to Thrive Theme Builder or Thrive Architect, feel free to hop over to convology.com where I have lots of additional tutorials and courses to teach you how to use these great tools.